Hello, dear friends. Welcome to the second season of Gutem Meetups. And today we are talking about content marketing and about how you can employ it for your telematics business. Uh, this information will be useful not only for marketing specialists, but also for different specialists of your company. Um, my name is Ksenia Dobrova. I'm a content strategist here at Gurtam, and together with the marketing team, we handle pretty much every piece of content you see from our company. And I've been working with content marketing for about 10 years now, and I will be very happy to share my experience with you. Well, uh, please don't forget to ask your questions in the chat um, because I will be answering your questions uh, at the end of the webinar. And uh, this video mm, will be also available uh, as a record uh, on our YouTube channel. Please uh, don't forget to subscribe to it and uh, turn on the notifications in order not to miss um, our new videos. Okay, let's start. Today, we again, we are talking about content marketing in telematics. And um, I'm actually going to explain why we chose this very topic. We conducted a research uh, of the content uh, of our partners, and we discovered that only 12% of VLON partners are using um, use cases or case studies in their marketing activities, and only 27% of hardware manufacturers do that. Well, this is not much at all, and uh, compared to the situation uh, with our IoT project of the year contest, when we got more than 100 of applications of case studies, and most of them were like they were not published anywhere. They were first published only during the contest, and they existed somewhere in your minds, and they could work for the sake of your business. So we are going, we are going to explain how to use uh, case studies in your marketing so you can uh, achieve success next year. Okay. Um, here's the agenda of the uh, webinar. We will be figuring out how the format of content uh, of use cases works. We will be breaking down the rules and some typical mistakes of the format. Also, we will be talking about uh, production stuff, how to actually create those use cases. We will be talking about repurposing and distribution of use cases. And, of course, KPIs and measuring the effectiveness of what you do. At, and, uh, as I have already said, uh, at the end of the webinar, I will be answering your questions. So, please don't forget to ask them in the chat. And this webinar will be approximately an hour and a half long. Okay, now let's start. Well, actually, before uh, talking about anything here, I would really like to define what is content marketing. It's marketing of information. Uh, it means that we use different information to address our business challenges. And, well, those business challenges can be really different. And uh, to help you understand that, I have put some examples for you here. So, um, here's the challenge. Like, I think it's familiar for many businesses. You need to get some new clients, right? And um, you have a, an issue with them. They think that uh, telematics is too expensive, that they can't afford it, and they refuse to buy from you. Well, what to do here? Like, how can we help this situation with content marketing? Well, you can publish a set of use cases uh, featuring numbers of the projects, and those numbers would show that uh, the company actually saved more money after implementation uh, than they paid for the actual solution. 
And well, here's the example from our use cases library uh, where in the results we have exact uh, numbers uh, showing that the customer first, th there is a one time save and they are saving on fuel expenses a certain number of percent uh, monthly. Okay, and to give you a better idea, I'm going to switch to the next example. Uh, for example, you're going to an exhibition, to an expo, and you're going to acquire new clients there. And, well, uh, of course, most of the visitors don't know much about your company, and they don't know anything about telematics or your services or your products. And, well, it's pretty much, it's, it's difficult to tell everything just in a conversation. That's why you can use printed materials make them and bring them to the ex exhibition and uh, this is also content marketing right uh, so here on the picture you can see uh, the um, package of printed materials uh, which we take with us uh, when we visit any uh, conference expo or exhibition right and the next example well of course we have uh, we have to acquire new clients and we have to uh, think about clients' retention and how, how to do that with content marketing. Here's the example. Uh, your clients um, think that VLON is extremely difficult to deal with. It happens, it's not easy, and they can't deal with the system and they're thinking about moving to a different system. So what can you do uh, you know, to keep them. Uh, again, you can employ content marketing. You can uh, inform your clients that you offer staff training. Uh, you can uh, create articles about VLON and, well, create an email campaign, for example. You can use our articles because obviously we write a lot about VLON. You can use uh, these uh, publications, collect links, again, create a marketing campaign, share them on social media, and so on and so forth. Um, you can create your own training materials because you know the pains of your customer, you know their main questions, so you can address them successfully. And here is the example of um, a YouTube channel it was created by our specialists and this YouTube channel is actually the channel of VLON, on, uh, um, training videos about VLON, but the videos are not branded. So it's just IoT solution and that's all. And we created these videos especially for those partners who are working uh, on a white label basis, right? So they can use these videos, non-branded. They can take these videos and maybe brand them with their own like stuff. So uh, it's just an example how it really works. Now, um, I named uh, three challenges in examples and in reality there are many more challenges that can be addressed with content marketing. Um, you can inform your leads, your customers about anything. You can uh, handle objections. It's more like uh, to the sales and business development side, but still it really, it really works. You can, uh, can work on increasing the average check and you can do some upselling with content. You can really work on your company image and brand. Um, you can work with uh, SEO. Well, they are very uh, SEO is very closely connected to content. You can, again, as I have already said, work with customer retention and acquiring uh, the contacts of your leads, for example, um, with locked content. It means that when uh, the content is available only when someone fills the form, fills in the form or uh, um, shares uh, his or her email or number, and then you use these contacts, you know, for your purposes. 
right? So here's the example again on the screen. Here's a piece of news uh, from a telematics company. Well, they are talking about their project, but they also sharing like they are honored to participate in this religious event. And it, it also works for PR and stuff like that. Okay. And I have already mentioned different content formats and I'm sure you've met a lot of them. These are news, these are posts uh, on the blog, newsletters, uh, mm, posts on social networks, uh, publications on third party platforms. These can be press releases and guest posts, informational materials, videos, presentations printed materials, and so on and so forth. Well, um, what is really important here? Um, we are talking about different formats, uh, and we know that imagery is, like people uh, understand imagery better than just text, and we know that video is very popular nowadays, but still uh, text is the base of all content forms and formats. And we have to remember that we will use this um, reason a little bit later. Mm, for example, if you want to create a video, uh, you still need your text uh, created. Uh, you have to write the script. You have to, to create a scenario. You have to create the text for subtitles. You have to create a good description for your video. And this is basically text, and only after that you actually shoot the video. So here we are talking about content-first approach. Well, it's very simple actually. It means that uh, any project starts with creating content, and everything comes after. If you're creating a landing page, um, you create the text, and then you add your layout, or you add your design, and so on and so forth. Okay, I hope it's clear. And um, maybe those of you who, who are not using content marketing right now, maybe you have a question. Well, uh, does your company need actually um, content marketing? And uh, I like I got such questions very often and. Um, my answer is uh, rather simple. Uh, it's your decision whether to use content marketing or not to use it. But uh, before making this decision, you have to understand that, well, uh, before uh, refusing s uh, a certain channel where you can uh, get a, a way you can acquire new customers and you can work on keeping your customers with you. Uh, you have to properly understand all, all the pros and cons of this channel. So content marketing is a channel and you have to decide whether it fits you or not. Uh, are you ready to uh, pour your resources into it and I, or are you ready to um, refuse all the benefits uh, it offers you. So um, I guess I said that my answer is simple, but it's not rather simple. Well, again, you, uh, it's like it's, it's a business decision. Uh, I would say that for most telematic companies, um, content marketing is essential. Okay, and before actually uh, moving to um, to cr uh, actually creating the uh, use case, uh, I would like to talk about some peculiarities of content marketing as a channel. And I think these points are really important for telematics companies. Here's why. Um, you have to uh, understand that uh, content marketing is continuous. Uh, it never works when you just publish one article or one blog post and that's it. Your sales won't like boost uh, right away. It's not working like that. Uh, content marketing is something you need to do regularly, um, consistently, uh, but the great thing about it 
is that um, if you are doing this way, um, uh, there is no ball effect. It means that uh, the more you do, the greater the effect is, and it, it just works and works better and better and better. And um, another thing uh, which is very important here is that content marketing is integrated uh, with all business processes. It means that it is in very close connection to different to, to uh, business development, to sales, to different parts of uh, marketing. Uh, content marketers often talk to uh, technical specialists a lot and so on and so forth. Um, content is really very, very flexible um, just due to its nature because you can use different styles, you can use different uh, tones of voice, you can use different imagery, uh, you can actually adapt your content to, um, to a certain part of your audience, right? So here's the next thing, that content can be really targeted at a certain part of your audience. And this is very good, like based on general marketing concept, concepts. Okay. Uh, again, um, we are uh, now talking about uh, use cases. And we start talking about this uh, form of content from understanding how it actually works. You really have to understand that and you will see why uh, just in a couple of minutes. Um, when we are talking uh, about interaction of your use case and um, people, this interaction can be divided into two, like roughly uh, two parts. When a person uh, is interacting with your use case, with his emotions, with his knowledge, uh, with thoughts and ideas and so on and so forth. And uh, the second part is when your use case is interacted with business. Let's break uh, these ideas down. Now, um, when we're talking about interacting with a person, like you have like a real person sitting behind the screen somewhere and he's reading your use, use case. And we are social creatures. We have, you know, certain things about our psychology. And well, it's good for marketing because, because you can use these things for your advantage. Now, uh, the first important thing is social proof. Uh, there are different types of social proof, but basically, um, social proof is the reason why we have so many uh, testimonials on the websites, why we have um, a bunch of logos of clients uh, shown on the websites and so on and so forth. Because they actually work, because they give uh, the social proof to your future customer and uh, there are different si uh, also different sides of this part like people like to identify themselves with a special group uh, people like to acquire some expert information because they feel good about it and people are uh, also not just social creatures but creatures of hierarchy and they need like to um, while perceiving the world they need to put all things they see uh, on two different shelves, like uh, up high or not very high, but they have to you know, break down the world into a, a hierarchy. Um, well, it's better, it's easier to understand it. And well, um, it may sound complicated, but uh, the result here is simple. We have to use social proof in use cases. We have to use um, uh, we have to use information which shows our uh, credibility. Uh, we uh, show the social proof with uh, feedback and testimonials, and also it is shown by showcasing the real project. Please never ever write about projects which are not real. It's uh, too risky and sooner or later it will be revealed. Please just don't do that, it's not worth it. 
Um, and we are providing a person uh, with an opportunity to uh, identify himself with the story. And here's the short example. If you are, for example, if you're publishing a very fancy use case about a project with a very fancy client, like an enterprise company, um, and you did some nice customization stuff for them, and um, well, the project was very expensive and very complicated and stuff like that, uh, well, sounds really good, but say you have a lead which is like a small entrepreneur and he has approximately 100 uh, units in his fleet and he has limited amount of money to spend on telematic solution. So, well, he will be impressed by such a use case, such a fancy use case, right? That's correct. But um, I'm not sure he will be able to identify himself with the story. And here, maybe we should create a use case which is closer to him, to his story, to his business, to his size of business, uh, to his finances. So he can really understand like, yeah, that's, that's um, probably what I'm looking for. Okay, uh, next thing, um, well, science tells us that um, if uh, a story, any story, not just use cases, if a story has uh, a certain structure, our brain releases hormones which are responsible for building trust. This is a fact and use case is a story. That's why structure is a must for any use case. Um, we will break down the idea of structure a little bit later too. And the next uh, thing connected to our brain is, um, well, the idea that we learn through mimicking and f through repeating what other people do. This is uh, the base of, like the base learning mechanism and um, when we are writing a use case, a person must believe that the same result can be achieved in his situation. It is very close to the previous point, actually. Okay, this is uh, like we've talked about um, the situation when a use case communicates with a person. But after that, say, here's a fleet manager and he, uh, uh, he read your use case and he's now coming to your CEO and says, here's the deal. Like, I have this idea, let's employ a, a telematic solution, let's track our fuel, we will spend this much uh, on the equipment and on the solution, and well, the prospects are here that we will save this much um, because of the solution. And the C uh, CEO will think and say, that's okay, like, it's, it's, it can be good for us. Or he says like, no, this is not reasonable. The idea is that here, uh, the use case is communicating with uh, the client's business and it speaks the business language. Business language is logic, facts and numbers. And you absolutely have to use them in your uh, success stories. It's very important. If you don't use this language, the communication is not possible. And we will see a bit of examples uh, in the next slides. Now, a little bit about the rules. So we are very close to actually like creating your first use case. And here are some rules that you have to consider well to make your first use case really good. Um, I've talked about structure a couple of times before. Here it is, the first rule your use case must have struct structure, semantic structure, which is supported by visual structure. Uh, your use case must be targeted at certain audience. We also spoke about that because you have to show your client that you can do something which is very like with his business. Um, your use case must be compliant with the requirements of other fields like uh, 
uh, it must be compliant with SEO requi requirements. It, it uh, can be compliant with the PR requirements. Um, your sales department may have some requirements to and so on and so forth. I, I told you before that content marketing is like is uh, very integrated into the whole company processes. Of course, we talked about the content first approach. Text is always first and the text must be good. So we're using the rules of good text. And well, I won't be breaking down this point here because, you know, uh, there are a lot of videos, books and stuff um, on good writing and if you don't know what I'm talking about, please, please research this part. This, be, this will be very useful for you. And last but not least, uh, compliance with legal documents and with the law. Um, it's not a very popular point and I don't see it mentioned like a lot, but this is also important because we are operating in a certain, you know, field of uh, legal documents. We are signing the documents with our client. You as partners are working uh, with us, uh, with Gortam. Obviously, we also have some legal documents signed. And of course, you're operating in a certain country and there are laws there. Um, so please, uh, please think about, um, you know, compliance um, in this part. Um, moving to, um, uh, to explanation of the structure. I have already said the structure is a must. It is very important. You just have to have it. And here's how you can build your use case. Now, we are talking about semantic structure, so what you're actually writing in the text. You start with the client's profile, then you move to the issue of the client, then you describe the solution you use to figure out the issue, and uh, after that, you're talking about the results for the client's business. And uh, how to support the structure visually. Now, it's actually very simple. You use titles and subtitles, you use text formatting, and you use and you break your text down in paragraphs, and you use layout and design. And here's um, an example. Well, uh, on the left you can see a screenshot of a use case from our use cases library, and on the right you can see a very old um, article from a Gurtam blog. I believe this is 2013 or 2015, something like that. Yeah, so um, looking at, at these two screenshots, I guess it's pretty clear why we should use visual support of the structure because it's easier to read. And more importantly, uh, you have to remember that people on the internet are not reading like the whole text from top to bottom. They're scrolling through, um, through the text and using um, these visual things like subtitles, like bold, like lists, we are helping our readers focus on the main, uh, focus um, and read the main things that they need to read. So yeah, moving to the next one and we talked about um, uh, the structure and uh, let's break down how to correctly describe your client's profile and use case. Now um, you can uh, share the company's name and the website link, you can describe what actually the company uh, what does the company do, uh, the scope of activities, and you can um, also highlight the region or the country the company is operating in. Now, I, I can't hear you, unfortunately, right now, but I know that um, sometimes you can, can't name the client by name, the company. And uh, yeah, I know this happens and we also publish uh, some use cases which um, are not mentioned in the client and that's okay. Well, because of course it's great when you can name the client, but you can describe all these things without the company name. 
like you can still like say the company for example is in logistics the company is um, for example their fleet size is like 500 vehicles that are operating all over Europe and stuff like that. And this information will help your future client understand what's going on here in this use case with the project. Okay, uh, moving to the client's issue again. Uh, here's the deal. Um, first of all, you should again remember about the business language. You should use numbers and logic uh, to uh, talk uh, to your future clients. And uh, here's um, also uh, an important part. Um, it is very easy to say that everything was uh, completely awful before you employed your telematic solution for the client, and now they've got the solution, and now everything is super good, uh, which is not exactly true because, you know, some companies are not at the edge of bankruptcy and they just would like to you know work on the business and you know make something better but it doesn't mean that everything is super bad at their company so please mind that um, well how to describe the uh, issue of a customer um, in our uh, sphere I often see that um, our partners write something like um, they didn't have any fuel tracking and uh, full stop, like this is the issue. Well, it m well I'm not uh, completely sure if it's helping because it's, it's not an issue itself. Um, if, uh, like, mm, let me give you another example for you to compare. Uh, the client uh, didn't have any fuel tracking and because of that uh, their drivers like stole fuel like crazy and because of that the company um, lost a lot of money on fuel. This is the correct explanation of a client's issue because it has uh, something to do with business like they eventually they lost their money and that is the correct issue. Uh, so please feel free to use this formula, which is shown on the screen, uh, to describe your client's issues. Okay, after we describe the client's issue, we are talking about the solution itself. And how to talk about the solution? Well, first of all, you can uh, enumerate the stages of uh, the project. For example, uh, you started to collect the requirements, you thought about the solution, its structure, you I don't know, you installed the equipment, you did uh, some staff training and things like that. Well, just tell about these stages. Also, uh, please name the elements of your solution. The software you used, the hardware you used, uh, how these elements uh, are interacting with each other, and please, please use reasoning behind those points. For example, you say that we used this uh, tracker for the project and explain why. Maybe it was cheap, maybe it is water resistant, maybe it has a long battery life uh, in connection to the project, of course. Okay, and the most important part of any use case is the result. Again, uh, we are using only business language. Uh, facts, logic, and numbers. Um, when we're talking about results, we can compare what was before and how it's now. It's the first thing. And um, we should really describe uh, the results that the client got uh, thanks to the solution we implemented for them. Um, we will probably yeah, we will talk about typical mistakes now uh, because uh, a lot of typical mista mistakes are actually con connected to the uh, results part. Um, well, a very typical mistake that I see a lot in IoT and in telematics is when you describe just the process of you know, implementing the solution. 
And this is understandable because it's your work. It's what you do. Like <laughs> you did this and you explain how you do, did this, but it's not enough for a use case. You have to extend your horizons. You have to tell about the client, about the issues, and you have to take about the results, not only about the solutions, like how you install those trackers and things like that. Yeah, we, tol we talked about the recommended structure before. So please use this structure, you know, to, to talk about other parts of the project. Now, the next part, the next typical mistake is uh, when you have a business result in your use case, but uh, it doesn't coincide with the client's issues. And here's, you, you can see the example on the screen when, for example, the issue was that the client lost money due to stolen fuel, and the result is, is described as now they have reports on units position. This is not like this. If we think a little bit, maybe we can find, uh, you know, a thread which connects <laughs> this issue and this result. But uh, we can do better, really, here. And. Uh, the better result is now they track fuel, no fuel is stolen, and they don't lose money. Here's the business result, and more importantly, it is connected to the issue you described earlier in your text. Okay, moving to the next typical mistake. Um, it's about good writing, it's about visual structure. If your text is looking like this, um, it's not going to work. Again, uh, you have seen, um, I may come back to the example um, I showed you earlier. Yeah, this is, this is the one. Uh, this is the example I was talking about. Basically, here's the text with no, absolutely no structure on the right. Here's what I'm talking about. It's a very typical mistake, and please avoid publishing uh, such texts because they just won't work. They won't, you know, grab the attention of your reader. Okay. Uh, now moving to the next typical mistake um, is when we uh, don't actually uh, highlight uh, the results for our client's business. Um, for example, I often see in IoT and telematics use cases when they write like, now they have this solution. Now they have GPS tr uh, trackers installed and now they have GPS monitoring system employed and that's all, like this is the result. Well, it is a fact that they have it, but it's not a business result for a company. So, you see uh, here on the screen, you see uh, another result which I consider more, you know, applicable here. And due to the monitoring system installed, the drivers now don't use the vehicles for personal purposes after work. And because of that, the client saves on fuel and maintenance. And ideally, you can, you know, have your numbers here. He saves like $40,000 uh, monthly on fuel and maintenance, for example. Uh, so always, we should always, always talk about business results. Now, uh, another mistake which is sort of totally understandable, like I can get that. When you, you publish your use cases and like they are so short, they are like one, two, three paragraphs. Um, I totally get it, you don't have time for this. But, well, this is 2020 and I'm sorry to tell you that we need to write more these days. And if we um, are going to strive in 2021, we have to write longer use cases so that they can contain all the stuff that I told before, uh, told about before. So, uh, please, please find some time and uh, it'll be worth it to work on your use case a little bit more. And now, before we actually move to uh, real examples of telematics use cases, let me give you a couple of hints which are very particular for our sphere when we work. 
where we work. Uh, first of all, uh, please don't forget to mention the equipment and the platforms you are using, if it's possible. Uh, for example, uh, you can even mention the exact model of the uh, device, right? Uh, please uh, describe, uh, please highlight the region and the country where you uh, have implemented your project. Uh, because different regions and different countries have uh, their, their own uh, peculiarities uh, and they may be important for the project and for your future customer. Um, the next point is very closely connected to the previous one, obstacles. Like often they are connected um, to the country, for example, it can be harsh weather, it can be tough political conditions, it can be, I don't know, Mm, anything um, and uh, please describe how you managed to overcome them uh, what you did to you know to fight the challenge please please I beg you at all times try to use some imagery and pictures from the scene from the sport from the company and uh, please try to use screenshots of the solutions of the reports of your customized solutions anything you can always hide the like, uh, sensitive information, but um, I often see that no imagery is used and this makes the text really dry and it's hard to actually imagine what happened on the site. Okay, and many of our partners are doing customization for their projects and if you are doing that, please explain this part so why you did some customization development, um, how uh, it works and how these components work with the ready-made parts of the solution. And of course not all the projects like uh, end like this. Many clients want more and if they want more, please, please tell about it. Tell that uh, next year they want not only like basic monitoring but they also want to employ video monitoring and you're going to to offer them this solution. Um, very often our partners offer different uh, activities connected with the projects. Again staff training, they write documentation, they offer support. Uh, well if you're doing that please please mention this in the use case too. And of course, last but again not least, and, um, you, please, please try to get some feedback from your clients. It may be difficult, I know. Maybe you'll have to look for some ideas how to, like, um, to make it beneficial for your client to give you some feedback. But if you use real feedback from a real person, from the client's company, and you publish it in your use case, this is like top notch and this is very good. Okay, uh, now we will uh, uh, go and see some real life examples uh, of use cases. Um, unfortunately, we cannot post the links in the chats. Uh, so please, please go to the video description and there are three links there. Please open the first link from uh, FMS Africa LTD and um, we will be looking at a real use case in telematics. Right? And we, um, here's a little disclaimer here. I will be telling uh, some good things about those use cases and I will be telling some uh, things that might be uh, improved, right? And uh, this is not for the sake of shaming anyone, not at all. You are super cool guys and even the fact that you have a use case published on your website is already like a cool thing, right? So um, I'm telling you this just um, uh, for the purpose of education and maybe if the authors of these use cases like uh, watch this webinar, maybe they uh, can have some ideas how to improve their contents, okay? So, no shame in here, only education. Right, so we have a use case and um, what can I say about this one? Mm, 
first of all, we can see that there's some structure going on, right? We have the title, we have some parts of the text, we have even the lists. Um, maybe the visual support of the structure is not super great. Maybe it can be improved, I would say. Uh, so, for example, here I guess we have something which can be subtitles, right? Um, so, yeah, as uh, if you are speaking about the structure. Well, here's the introductory part about the use case, right? And um, uh, they are talking about the problem of the client and uh, they're talking about the benefits. Um, but I would say that he, th there's um, the example of a too short use case. I guess this project is amazing and they can really elaborate on all the points. And uh, here's the example when you have like benefits, um, for example, reports of generator working hours like reports on generator refueling and fuel utilization reports. Super cool. I understand, like, I, underst I do understand that this is uh, beneficial. But can we please just, uh, you know, go a little bit further and uh, turn these points into a business value, right? Um, and also, I guess we could really extend the previous parts to like the problem statement and why it happened. And of course, there are no images here, which is, you know, uh, which is um, something you can uh, work on. And uh, by the way, they mentioned that this is the government sector and the location of the project. Yeah, so uh, all in all, uh, Here's a good base, but uh, you know you can really have a couple of hours and extend this one and add some images, and this will be a super cool um, use case. Okay, now we will move to the next example. So please, please go to the uh, description of the video and click the second link, which will be a link about uh, a, a link of uh, on-track solutions website. Now, um, you can uh, have a look at this use case uh, for the first time. We will scroll this down to understand what is happening here. And well, they have a longer page. They have definitely have some structure going on. It is super cool that they are having exact numbers like 86 uh, percent decrease in near collisions, for example, right? They uh, elaborated on the uh, solution a lot. And uh, in this part, which is super cool, they have the uh, feedback uh, from their customer and a short uh, product description. Well, uh, now, at first sight, like, I like it, and this is very good, like, considering that only 12% of our partners actually employ use cases, right? So, they're super cool guys that, that they did that. Now, uh, uh, moving to the things that can be really improved. First of all, which really, like, I'm wondering about why uh, this page is called success stories, but there's only one success story here. Um, and they are talking about their partners, like this is really social proof that they have a lot of partners, but if this is a page for success stories, maybe we could move this part a little bit um, uh, closer to the end of the page, because if we came to the page which is called success stories, we obviously would like to read a success story. So. Uh, so we wouldn't need to scroll this much to actually read this uh, use case. Now, uh, mm, I think we can improve something even here. First of all, uh, we definitely got some visual structure here. Uh, the only thing is they are using lists for like, the whole text is a list which is not 
super cool and I recommend using uh, regular text and lists, but not just, you know, lists, lists, lists for each paragraph of your use case. Now, um, they are talking, for example, they are talking about reports, like why, why can they show the screenshots of the reports? Um, they were, they're talking about video solutions, so maybe they can share which uh, devices were used for this project. Um, now, um, I guess, uh, like, like in any other project, they have some, you know, peculiarities and some challenging things, and they could definitely put this information over here, and, um, the, um, the parts uh, which, uh, with numbers, which is, I guess, the um, results part. Um, here's the thing. These short, uh, short phrases, uh, exact numbers, are doing really great. But still, I would like to elaborate. Like, you can leave this, w this, uh, this list of uh, numbers, but you can also uh, extend and explain, like, what happened and the business results uh, connected with these numbers. Uh, for example, 29% um, drop in unbelted drivers. Um, how, uh, like, uh, is it connected with injuries received during collisions and, uh, st and stuff like that? So, I guess, like, I would elaborate on these points. Right, and uh, they use a couple of images here, which are the logos of the companies. But well, why not use some, you know, pictures and images here? Why not? It will only complement this uh, use case, which it ha it has a good start. And I guess we, you know, you can give this a little boost um, by working on it a little bit more. Uh, so, yeah, but this is an example like how you can handle um, your, this is a rather good example of how you can handle your project, right? So, and uh, now I suggest we move to the next example. Please go to uh, the description of the video again and please click the third link, which is the link um, uh, of the Escort website, the hardware manufacturers, and uh, here's the use case on fuel mon monitoring on diesel, uh, on, on railway communication, right? So, um, let us look through, and while we are looking through, I would like to say that, well, um, this is a very good example. They obviously have semantic and visual structure. They have, like, they uh, describe the objective. They describe, they show the main facts, the country, the industry, the customer, the integrator, the equipment they use. They, like, each part is complemented by an image. And uh, they, uh, here they're describing the issue of the clients. And, uh, these uh, paragraphs are separated into blocks visually with the help of design. Look, they even have a picture of the uh, FLS they were using here. Um, now, here, uh, these are, by, by the way, these are the real pictures from the site, from the, um, from the real um, installation process. Um, and they describe the uh, challenges which uh, the integrator face when installing uh, the FLS and uh, they are talking about how they solve the problem and they are describing the results and sharing. You can see actually the screenshots and you can, it's even clickable, you can click and see what's going on here. And uh, they're breaking down the business results, like maybe, look here, they don't have exact numbers, right? Because, well, it's really difficult to count the 
uh, financial result for such for railway or for railway in a country. Uh, but they are talking about sticking to timetable, safety of passengers, financial losses, which were eliminated and the money saved due to improvements of the network. And uh, here's even a call to action. Uh, so if you read this case and you like it, you can order <laughs> something like that. Well, uh, I, it's really hard to uh, talk about things that can be improved here because it is a very good example. Yes, it is difficult to create a page like this. Yes, you have to, you know, put your effort into this. But believe me that this page or a page like this would work really well in uh, converting leads or acquiring new customers. Okay, we have looked through three examples and now we are moving back to um, we are moving back to our use cases and we are going to talk about the production here. So actually who should sit and write this use case? Uh, there are two uh, rough options here. You can uh, employ somebody in your company or you can outsource it. Well, there are companies which offer digital marketing ads and stuff like that and they offer content marketing and you can obviously go to them if you use uh, services of such a company you can go to them and say hey guys I need this use case to be written well can you help us here's the money and that's all um, but it um, it uh, doesn't work like that uh, it's sadly but it's true uh, you have to actually participate in the process why because you are the expert you know about this project uh, a lot and nobody knows more so you really have if you're hiring some people to help you you are still must be the expert uh, to review to help to provide with information and stuff like that uh, secondly well if you are going to search for a person inside your company well if you have a marketer or like a, a PR manager or a, somebody on a relevant position, you, of course, this is the person to, to refer to. But if you don't, like most of our partners don't, I guess, um, I would say in this uh, case, um, you should give this job to a person who, um, who writes better text. Like if somebody has really good writing skills, then please like, go to this person and ask her to write a use case. Because, um, you know, you can collect the information about the project. It's, it's not a big deal. Mm, but writing skills are hard and you cannot achieve, like, gain them in a day. So, yeah. Um, and how to collect this information, how to work with it? Bef like before like starting the, the text of the use case. For example, if you're giving this job to somebody in your company or uh, uh, in a company somewhere, uh, a third party company, yeah? Um, I guess uh, the, um, the best solution uh, to collect information on the project is to have a special questionnaire. Like this questionnaire will be, uh, basically this is a structure we talked before where there will be a, a point like who's the client, who, the client's name, the client's, um, I don't know, uh, the client's country, the client's issues and stuff like that. So you give this uh, questionnaire to a person who is, um, who knows about this project a lot and uh, they fill in this information and give this uh, information to a person who's going to write it. So yeah. And we use this uh, questionnaire uh, ourselves um, uh, and it works pretty well for us. Now, somebody wrote the text, you reviewed it, it is good from the technical point of view. You can hire um, 
if, if, you, if you like, you can hire an editor or a marketer uh, who will help you with, you know, the, uh, anything but the technical stuff to make your text look good. And uh, you can do a lot with a use case, but basically if you want to, you know, put it into production and push it live right away, uh, you can use your news blog or a blog on your website to publish use cases. This is the simplest part because uh, this because a blog actually has everything you need you can put you know you can make titles and subtitles there you can optimize your um, uh, use case for SEO you can put images he there you can you know uh, use different uh, text formatting and stuff like that so this is the best part uh, you can use uh, a, a website theme template um, for example, if you're using, uh, if your site is based on a platform where you can actually build your uh, pages without coding, like, I don't know, uh, there are some themes for WordPress, for example, um, usually they have uh, uh, ready-made templates for success stories and use cases. So please, like, if you don't want to build the page yourself, just use the sample page and put your text in there and publish it. And again, last but not least, you can uh, create a PDF file and uh, if you're not into, um, you know, PDF design uh, or if you don't have uh, a designer to do it for you, then you can just buy PDF templates, which are super cheap they can, I don't know, you can buy a very nice one uh, from five, like f they will be five, ten, fifteen dollars. And uh, like, by the way, fifteen dollars will be the fanciest one, I guess. And you just put the text in there, m minding the structure, and it will be ready for publishing. All right. You published your use case. What to do next? Please, 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 I beg you, never, never stop here because it is very important to, you know, repurpose and distribute uh, this tech. You already created it. You already, you, you already did a lot of work to create the text and please use it to its most. Now, you can post uh, your uh, use case on the social networks. You can send an email campaign. You can... Um, put the link uh, to the uh, use case in your email signature. You can include it uh, into printed materials. For example, on the right, you can see a screenshot of our, of, of our printed material, uh, which we uh, take uh, to expose. And here's the page where we highlight the projects of our partners. Uh, they are they are initially published on our use cases library, but we also put them into the printed materials, right? Of course, you can mention these projects in other blog posts and news pieces, and uh, you can create a PDF file, you can create a presentation or showcase this use case in another presentation. And, well, this is like just my slide is over here. I, I can't put any more examples, but uh, there are some. So please don't stop, but please and please uh, um, repurpose and distribute your content. Right. And well, we have done that. And uh, uh, here's the deal. Uh, it works in content marketing and it should be working in marketing in general. If you do something, you should really measure whether it is effective. Otherwise, if, like, it's if, if it's not effective, you should stop doing it because it's not valuable, valuable and it, it is not bringing you uh, profit. So, uh, how to measure if your success story uh, is effective or is not effective? Uh, I can split this part like, into, again, rough parts. First of all, there are things we can measure and uh, show in figures. Uh, there are uh, so-called online conversion, conversions which 
um, well, it is a set that shows how many people who came to your um, use case on your website page uh, converted. They filled in a form or called you, sent you a message, or wrote in the online chat. Um, it can be set up in Google Analytics. Um, if you don't know what it is, please, it, it is time to really dig into that. Please go to Google Analytics and see the possibilities of this instrument. And secondly, well, we know that not all the customers that come and read the use case, like they don't go and buy from you immediately. This is not good. Like the sales um, uh, period can be really long. It can be months, if not years. So uh, you, uh, you also have to track the behavior of people on the page of the use case. Again, Google Analytics is the best tool for this. It is free. You can install it on your website and you can see, for example, how, many, uh, how much time uh, the people are spending on the page with the use case. And if they're spending not much time, maybe it's not interesting and maybe these are not the right people. So here's like, here's some information for, you know, some uh, analysis, uh, right? So, and there are things which we can, you know, talk about, but we can't really show it in numbers, but we still have to look into them. Uh, the first thing is when we create a survey, not just for our customers, uh, but we can create the survey for a potential clients, which like didn't happen to be our clients. Like they were a lead and they like failed, <laughs> you know, to buy. So um, please ask what influenced their decisions. And if they mention, mention successful uh, pr projects showcased by you, then, you know, you know it's worked, really. Uh, you can also have this information while talking to the client. Yeah, so he, he may tell you that, well, I like this proje project you published on your website and so on and so forth. And of course, uh, you're not the only person talking to a client, so please ask your colleagues to do the same and to report to you after they acquire this information. Again, please, please do not skip this step. This is very important to measure if it's working. And please remember that you shouldn't do this like once or twice. This should be done again regularly, uh, continuously, and consistently. Now, you got this figure out, what to do next? Uh, like this is the advanced level. You can go and have a look at your competitors, uh, and what they're doing, do they have use cases, which ones, which projects, which clients, so, and so, so forth. You can build the process of, creation, uh, of crea uh, creating use cases. Right? So you can write it down, who is responsible, what are the resources, um, and so forth. So it can be like streamlined. Um, think about your portfolio. For example, you have your target audience. And uh, your target audience is, uh, audience is um, segmented into parts. Right? And say, in a year, you want to publish uh, um, a use case portfolio, which is covering uh, the whole audience. So you have to create use cases for uh, all the pieces, right, of the audience. And write it down and, uh, you know, think of what you can do uh, in the next year and build this portfolio from scratch. Now, of course, use cases, like, they are great. They are working really well in B2B, uh, but uh, this, is n n this is not the only form of content. This is only, <laughs> like, this is the one form of content, and there are different ones, and you can explore them. Please use the same uh, s mm, plan that we follow today. Uh, to explore the uh, different forms of content. You can like take blog posts or videos. And again, uh, let me remind you, first of all, you uh, learn how the format works, then you study the rules and typical mistakes in order not to do them, uh, then you actually produce the case, then you uh, repurpose 
and distribute this use case in different forms, and then you measure the effectiveness and see maybe you need to change something. Okay, and I guess this is time for questions. I uh, will have a look at the questions you sent in the chat. Just a couple of uh, seconds here. Okay, now here's the question. You're asking um, what, uh, okay, you're asking what if the client doesn't want to, uh, to participate in publishing the use case and uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't want to get the permission for mentioning him. Uh, it happens often and uh, it, is, it is a hard part and there, there is no universal like answer here but um, I would say that uh, you have to find uh, a reason to participate, uh, to give the information, to give their um, permission to mention them. So it will be beneficial for them. And if they are having any concerns about their PR image or anything, you should address these concerns, right? So, well, give them a reason to do that, not just please, please do, please let us, that's not working. Maybe, you know, it works in different ways. Maybe sometimes you have to give them a, a very small discount uh, in return to this, you know, um, in return to the use case or mentioning them or the feedback or a testimonial. Maybe sometimes, you know, <laughs> you have to, you know, go uh, have, uh, uh, a dinner with the SEO and talk to them. Maybe uh, after that he will, you know, agree to participate. Maybe sometimes you have to send an official request for this. Find the different ways and if, um, uh, if it's not working, please do not, um, you know, get upset. It really happens. It happens with us too. Uh, we know about a great many of different projects which are super cool, but unfortunately we, can, we cannot write about them uh, because it is prohibited by the NDA or the client is very like, adamant about this or maybe the partner is very adamant about this um, or the law doesn't allow this. Like, there are many reasons. Yeah, okay. I hope that answers your question. And the next question is, uh, should you get the written client's approval uh, to, uh, for the use case? Well, um, it's a really good question, actually. Uh, my, like, if I were a lawyer, I would say yes always because it's safe, because everything is written there, all the sides are protected, uh, but thing is, uh, it's very hard to acquire such a written approval and sometimes it just stops people from doing anything. So in reality, in most cases, you don't need such an approval. I guess uh, I, can figure out, I can figure out two uh, situations when you really do need a written approval from the client to use the information about the company and about the use case uh, that they were using a telematic solution uh, for their company. And now um, this is uh, uh, the first one is uh, when you're going to heavily promote the use case like we did with our contest with the IoT project of the year. We were publishing the descript uh, the short where we were mentioning the use uh, cases in the publications in Russian Forbes on Business Insider and so on and so forth. And uh, we heavily, you know, we, we uh, promoted uh, on different platforms. And uh, that's why to protect ourselves, to protect our partners and to protect our customers, we had to uh, ask for uh, a written uh, approval from a client. Um, and you should do that too. And the second uh, point is when you're working with a very uh, like big enterprise company or a famous brand, they're very cautious about sharing the information. I, and I guess they would, you know, 
they would be the first one to suggest you to uh, to create this approval, and they will be mentioning what you can tell about them and you, what you can't tell about them. So in other cases, uh, I guess we can deal without the written approval, uh, and you, we can, you know, if we have any questions, uh, we can negotiate them in a friendly manner. Okay. Uh, I answered two questions, and well, if uh, you uh, have a question afterwards, or you're watching this uh, as a recording on YouTube, please uh, do not hesitate to contact me, uh, send me a note, uh, the email is uh, on the screen. Um, I will be glad to help you to elaborate on some points if something is unclear. Um, yeah, so um, speaking about the next uh, meetup, uh, which will be on December 17th, and we will be having a very big update of the Nimbus app. And my colleagues Victoria and Oleg will be talking about this huge update of Nimbus, uh, again, December 17th, uh, same time as today, uh, 5 p.m. Please join us, uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel in order not to miss um, this meetup and other videos. And thank you so, mu uh, so much for watching this webinar. Thank you for asking questions. Uh, thank you for staying with us. And please stay safe, please stay healthy, wear your mask, and see you on the next meetups. Thank you.